Today we're going to be looking at some of the new features in Tornado FX 152, specifically the new view model, which is an MVC or MVP helper, the validation framework, how to switch between views, and we're going to take one small look at the new features in the TypeSafe CSS, and uh, also uh, how to use the REST client. So to uh, demonstrate these features, we're going to create a small application that actually logs into GitHub. So let's start on an IntelliJ idea and create a new project. I already have the Tornado FX uh, uh, idea plugin installed, so I'm going to use that and uh, base this sample off the Gradle project template. So we're going to call it demo. And it's one small niggle with this uh, template right now. So after you import, you will get this question. Just uh, just uh, click OK and continue. I'll try to get that sorted in the next, next release. All right, so what we have in this template, we have a view called main view. And uh, this we're going to rename to to be our login screen. The root of this login screen is going to be a form. And we're going to set the title to GitHub login. Let's remove this and let's get started. So this form is going to have a username and a password field and a login button. So we'll start with a field set and inside there define a field for the username. And this is going to be a text field. And we're going to have one field, sorry, for the password. And that's going to be a password field. Now we want the, the labels to be above uh, the inputs, so we're going to change the label position to vertical. So outside the field set, we're going to have this button, and it's going to say login. When you click this button, we're going to have an action. We're going to call the function that we call login. This login function is actually going to operate on this button. So to make this happen, we're going to define the function on button itself. So it's still just a normal function, but the, the difference is that this inside here is actually going to be a button. So when someone clicks this button, we're going to change the icon of the button to be a progress indicator. Okay, so we're gonna need some, some small styling for this sample. So let's go into the style sheet and uh, we're gonna define the CSS class called, uh, no, we're gonna call it login. And uh, we're gonna apply this, uh, this class to our form. We're also going to define one property in the style sheet, and that's going to be the width of the login screen. So we'll call it login width, and that's going to be 300 pixels. Now we're going to define a selector. This selector will be on forms that are also login. We'll add some padding to it, and we'll just leave this from the sample in there. But we're going to set the pref width to the login width. If we encounter a button, and we will, its pref width will also be login width. If we find a progress indicator, its pref width will be 16 pixels and its pref height will be the same as the pref width. That's about all the styling we're going to need. So we can go back to the login screen and we can have a look at this. So I'm defining a run configuration and I'm using the TornadoFX plugins run configuration for this. And it asks for an application uh, class and that's our my app class, which the sample defined. You, you're free to rename this if you want, of course. And we're gonna call it demo. So let's try to run this application now. That's good. Um, 
the only action we have right now is when you click the button, this priority indicator will, will pop up. So here it is and nothing more happens. So to be able to talk to GitHub, uh, we were going to need a model. So I'm going to create a package for models and define define a new user model in here. This user is going to have a couple of properties. It's going to be a username property, which is a simple string property, and a password property, the same type. And uh, since we're looking at the view model, we're also going to create a, a view model for this class, and we're going to call it a user model. It extends view model, and its constructor is going to take a user. So this means that uh, this um, this uh, view, uh, user model view model is going to contain a user, and it's going to delegate to some properties we're going to create here now. So let's create a username which is going to be bound to the user's username property. And then we're going to do the same for password. We get back to what this actually does in a minute. So back in our login screen, we're going to define a model, which is a user model. And by default, it's going to have an empty user inside it. Now with this model, we can go to our text field and uh, we can make sure that uh, the property for uh, the username inside the model will be bound to this text field. We're going to do the same for a password field, but this time bound to the pass password property. Uh, we're going to add some very simple validation now, and we're going to use an, a built-in va uh, validation called required. We're going to do that on both, both fields, and this will just make sure that we can't commit this model without uh, it having a value in both fields. So it's also possible to, to uh, change the trigger for this validator. As you can see by default, it's on change. So meaning every time the input value changes, this validation will be reevaluated. So we're going to leave that for now, but we're going to override the default message. As you can see, uh, it will just say this field is required. So let's change the message to uh, uh, insert your username, for example. I'm not going to do it for the password field though. All right, so down in login, we're gonna, after you click the button, we're gonna take this model and we're gonna commit it. And what, this, uh, what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the values from these two fields and it's gonna uh, push them into the properties of the user object that's inside this model. Commit will also uh, return a boolean indicating whether uh, the commit could uh, happen because the validation was okay. Um, so we're only going to act if validation was uh, successful and uh, the values was, uh, were flushed back into the user object. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do here is uh, now try to log into GitHub. So we need to define a controller create a package for controllers and uh, we're going to create a github controller. This will extend controller and we're going to use the rest client. So we'll create a, a property called API, which is of type rest and we're going to inject this. And we're going to set the default uh, or the base URI rather uh, for this uh, API instance. It's going to be api.github.com So we know we're going to need a login function of some kind, so let's define that. It's going to take a user and it's going to return a boolean if the login was successful. So to do that, we're going to take this API and do a get request against the user path. So this will be api github.com slash user. Uh, but before we can make the request, we have to set up basic authentication with the, the username and password uh, that we got passed from this user object. So that's done like this, username property and password property value. Now we can do the get request and uh, we're not going to use the data we get, so we're just going to consume the response uh, so that the connection closes and we're going to check if uh, it was a success. So this OK function, it actually just checks if the status code of the response was 200. So let's return that. And this is actually a, a basic login function now. 
So back in our login screen, we must first inject the GitHub controller. And now I can use it. So we're gonna do this off of the, the UI threads. So we're gonna wrap this code in run async. So let's call GitHub login with a user object. And we need to get this user object from our model. As you know, the user object now wraps uh, or the user model wraps the user object. After we run commit, the values from here will be flushed into this user object. So we can extract this user object again from the model and pass to the GitHub login function. So uh, the login returns a Boolean, we know that. And uh, with this Boolean, we'd like to operate on the UI thread again. And uh, instead of it, we're gonna call this success. So that's the Boolean we get back from the login uh, call. So now we're back on the UI thread, so we can do something with it. What we're going to do is simply, if it's a success, we're going to change screen to uh, some protected uh, screen. So first we, of course, need to, to create the screen. Uh, let's see, we create a new view. It's going to be called protected view. And uh, root node is going to be a stack pane, this one. Okay. And uh, we're going to do it really easy. We're just going to add a label inside the stack pane. And uh, right, you are logged in. We don't need an init block for this. So let's um, replace this view with the protected view. And we also want a transition when this happens. And the tr trans uh, there are some transitions uh, defined, but you can easily define your own transitions as well. So you can see transition is just uh, a function that takes two UI components and does something with them. And the contract is that you have to make the first one disappear and it has to be replaced with the, with the second one. So there are some built-in view transitions and we're gonna use the slide in transition for this. Uh, but we're only going to do this if it was a success. So if success, we'll do this. If not, we're going to show a warning. This is probably too simplistic for a real application, but uh, for this demo, it's okay. So login failed. Check your credentials. So now I think we have all, all we need. Let's try to run it. All right, so first we're gonna check this validation. Remember we set a specific message for the, the required validator of the username field. So let's just try to log in. And what login does, it will call model commit. And commit will also run all the validators that are set. So when we log in, you see we get this red triangle indicating an error and uh, uh, our custom message. So I'll write something there. And uh, if we go down to the password field, you can see that the, the, uh, uh, the pop-up or the, this tooltip will only be visible when we enter or give focus to, uh, to, an, uh, to a field that has a validator uh, that's uh, not satisfied right now, you see. Okay, so first we're gonna try to uh, just enter something. Oh, I see, we, we forgot one more thing actually. You see, we, we now still have this, uh, this uh, um, uh, progress indicator running the whole time. So we have to make sure that um, uh, we reset this. So if uh, we commit this, uh, uh, if, if we commit, uh, then we don't run async and then we're over on the UI thread. So now we can set graphic to null. If we, actually we can move this uh, this into here because it's not going to take time to commit anyway. So only if we commit, we will set the graphic to a progress indicator, and then uh, uh, on the UI thread we're gonna remove it again, no matter the result. Oh, and we need an else here, of course. Okay, let's try again. So this is the wrong credentials. We have the progress indicator and we got the login fail message. Now let's try with the correct credentials. And as you can see, the new view slides in. 
Uh, right now there is no message up here, there's no title in this message uh, or in this window. And uh, that's because we didn't define a title for the protected view. So if we go to protected view in the init block, we're going to set the title to uh, logged in, for example. And this is to show you that uh, the title of the view will also be swapped when you, you know, run the replace view function. Uh, with the replace with function, sorry. So let's try again. And you can see now that the, the title is GitHub login. And after we log in, it changes to logged in. That's it.